I'm Lana Bettenbow and I'm going to be reading today one of my recent picture books which is called Brother Butterfly. It's published with Curious Cat Books and the illustrations are by the very talented Philippa Bernard. As you can see I'm sitting in my garden at the moment, you can probably hear the birds singing um, and perhaps maybe some um, real butterflies might even come by to listen as well. Caterpillars, Percy and Charlie, were brothers and the best of friends. Wherever one crawled, the other crawled too. Although Percy was the oldest by two weeks, they were identical in size. The only way to tell them apart was a little birthmark near Charlie's left eye. Percy thought it looked like an upside-down apple. The brothers each had 16 wriggly legs attached to bright green hairy bodies. They lived a simple but happy life in a magnificent oak tree in the park. Every inch of the enormous tree was home to a woodland creature or insect, a habitat hotel with a different species on each floor. They lived in harmony and on special occasions came together to celebrate. Some of the hard to reach branches were still draped with tinsel from last year's Christmas party. Percy, Charlie and 15 other caterpillars lived on the third highest branch. The ladybirds who lived on the next branch up were fantastic foragers. Yummy smells often wafted down to Percy and Charlie. Using berries, they'd sometimes disguise themselves as ladybirds and sneak up to steal a tasty treat or two. The slow crawl there took them a whole day, but it was always nearly worth it. One day, they were returning from a failed attempt to fool the ladybirds when they noticed a circle of worried looking caterpillars at the end of their branch. As they crept closer, they realised the large round caterpillar in the middle of the huddle was their cousin, Rupert, and he was three times his normal size. Rupert was surrounded by food. He nearly toppled over when he bent to scratch his toes with a twig. I'm a mess, mumbled Rupert through a mouthful of berries. His cheeks were round but pale and he looked afraid. I can't sleep, my feet are itchy and I can't stop eating. What's happening to me? One of the other caterpillars leaned forward and replied in a hushed voice. It could be the change. I heard my uncle talking about it once, but before I could ask him any more about it, he vanished. There was a loud gasp from the group and Charlie grabbed hold of one of Percy's legs. Ouch, Percy squealed. Rupert spotted them and quickly silenced his friends. By the time the butterflies had wriggled over to talk to him, he'd already rolled out of sight. Something didn't seem right. While Percy and Charlie slept that night beneath a blanket of stars, Rupert disappeared without a trace. Perhaps he's gone on holiday, suggested Percy the next morning, feeling hopeful. He didn't want his little brother to worry. Charlie was not convinced, his nervous tummy fluttered. They asked Rupert's friends where he'd gone, but they were all too busy eating to answer. Charlie noticed they had pale cheeks and itchy feet too. His tummy ached worse than ever. More and more caterpillars vanished over the next few nights. Their bustling oak tree was soon, to just, soon home to just six caterpillars. I'm scared, whimpered Charlie, cuddling against Percy's side. I don't want to change like the others. He hid his head in his hands and cried. It's just a story, Charlie. It's nothing to worry about. We'll be fine, Percy reassured him. He tried to sound convincing, but he was also starting to feel strange. It wasn't long before the overwhelming urge to eat took over. Just like Rupert, Percy began to shovel scoops of food into his cheeks. Before he'd finished breakfast, he was moving on to lunch, his tummy growing rounder by the minute. Charlie was sure he saw his brother scratch his toes. Please stop, Percy, Charlie begged. A week later, only Percy, Charlie and one other caterpillar remained in their tree. Their branch was eerily quiet. Charlie asked some of the nocturnal creatures if they had seen anything suspicious, but none had not even the owls with their wide glowing eyes. Determined not to let anything take Percy, Charlie decided to keep watch that night. He placed an acorn cup on his head as a helmet and guarded his brother. I won't let you disappear, he promised. I won't let it get you, I'm going to stay awake all night. Percy didn't hear him, he was too busy devouring a mountain of leaves. Charlie marched up and down the branch with his eyes fixed on Percy, whose cheeks were as white as May Blossom. It seemed like the perfect plan until Charlie's feet ached and his eyes felt heavy. Before long, he fell fast asleep. 
his snores rumbled along the branch. When sunlight burst through the gaps in the leaves, Charlie was too afraid to look. He felt for his brother beside him but found nothing, so he slowly opened his eyes. There was no sign of Percy or the other caterpillar. Charlie was completely alone. He wished he hadn't fallen asleep. Charlie scoured the branches, sobbing and calling out Percy's name. An army of ants heard Charlie's shout and kindly agreed to help him. They could crawl much faster than Charlie and scurried all over the tree. The search party reported back with news. They'd found a mound of half-eaten blackberries at the base of the tree. The ants clung to each other to form a caterpillar raft and carried Charlie all the way down. Blobs of blackberry juice decorated the grass and glistened in the sun. Grateful, Charlie thanked the ants and set off on his quest to find his missing brother. He walked for hours following the trail of berries, footprints and apple chunks, praying they would lead him to Percy. His poor little feet throbbed. He tried to keep going, but it started to shower. Charlie watched miserably as heavy drips washed away the clues and his chances of finding Percy. His tears pitter-pattered like the rain. Charlie curled up like a woodlouse, rested his back against a tree trunk and tightly closed his eyes. He desperately wanted everything to be normal again. He liked things the way they were before, before his ch friends changed, before he was alone. Charlie wandered among fallen oak leaves for nearly two weeks searching for Percy. At night, afraid to be alone in the dark, he perched on the closest branch to a nearby street lamp. The cold wind howled through the trees. He was starting to lose all hope when a, gro a groaning sound made his hair stand on end. Terrified, he peered around and spotted a silky shape hanging above him. Hello? Charlie called out. The silky shape shivered and swayed. Charlie guessed whatever or whoever was inside must have been trapped. He'd heard horrifying stories of giant spiders living in their tree, but thankfully he'd never come across one. Charlie patted the shape gently with a dandelion stem and it moaned even louder. He stopped, worried he might hurt it. I'll get help. Charlie wriggled as fast as he could in the direction of some ladybirds. When he returned to the scene with two friendly ladybirds in tow, there was nothing but the remains of the silky casing lying on the ground. Charlie wailed, assuming the poor trapped creature must have been eaten by a spider. Suddenly, out of the sky came a swooshing sound. Charlie expected to see a menacing spider swinging from a web, but instead he saw a beautiful creature with colourful outstretched wings. What's wrong, Charlie? asked the creature. It sounded just like Rupert. Rupert, is that you? Percy told me you were on holiday, cried Charlie. He was incredibly relieved, if a little confused, to see his cousin's friendly face. Do you still not know? Rupert asked, fluttering his wings and smiling. Charlie shook his head. It started to rain again. Rupert sheltered his cousin using his wings and explained all about the changes he'd experienced. Did the change hurt? Charlie asked, admiring Rupert's beautiful colours. I didn't feel a thing. Charlie asked question after question, his eyes wide with wonder. He was no longer scared and wanted to know all about the change. Soon, they were interrupted by a second fluttering sound. The most magnificent butterfly with bright patterns twirled above them. Percy, cried Charlie, waving his little legs. You're a butterfly too. Percy kissed his brother on the head and delicately wrapped his soft wings around him. I'm sorry I left you, whispered Percy. It turns out I was ready to change. He launched into the air and performed a loop. Charlie cheered for more. When will I be ready? asked Charlie, eager to join them now he knew what was going to happen. Any day now, Charlie, said Percy, and I'll be here beside you when you do. Percy was right. Two days later, after gorging on anything he could find, Charlie instinctively built a silky cocoon around his body. His brother waited patiently for 12 long days, flittering back and forth, collecting sweet nectar from the flowers. When Charlie finally emerged, they looked just like brothers again, in striking red and blue. There was nothing to be scared of her, after all, cried Charlie. And that's the end. So my book, Brother Butterfly, um, is available on Amazon, or you can order it directly from me. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, and um, I hope you're in your children enjoyed it as well um, and I'd just like to say thank you to Philippa um, for creating such incredible illustrations that um, brought my story to life. Thank you, bye!